Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Uh, today, I am revisiting a place that I have been to, but that you have not been to. Um, last year, I came out uh, to a small town uh, just east of Edmonton, and <laughs> I came out to buy some old car radios, which have come in very handy. Um, I got the factory correct radio for my Mercedes, factory correct radio for my Ferrari, um, all from this one gentleman. But what surprised me was that he had such a vast collection of really nice classic cars and I didn't get a chance to show any of that last time I was out there. Honestly, I was too bashful and too um, humbled by his collection to even ask to film. But this time I have asked if I can film and he's given me the green light. And trust me guys, when you see the cars this guy has just lying around, um, you're gonna be floored. So stick with me on today's episode as we uh, show you some really cool cars. <laughs> so let's go check it out. I have come to the amazing car place that I was thinking of, which I ended up buying an MG from. And the first thing that we see when we walk in the door, uh, Myron here, the owner of all these vehicles, 87 Ferrari 328. This is a GTS? Yeah. Okay. And it looks to be in absolutely pristine condition. Now, you were saying you did the body work and everything on this yourself, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. It, it is just a phenomenal looking car. Um, it wasn't like it wasn't a whole big bunch of body work. It was hit right in this right here. Oh, so it had a, a little bit of damage on the front yeah, fender. We didn't didn't replace any body panels. The structural uh, with these Ferraris, the older ones, you could go down to your local metal shop and pick up all the pieces that you need there. You just have to fabricate them. Right. Yeah. Uh, wise, uh, had it all. You know, we went went through everything, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, the interior looks great. And this, so pretty much the, a lot of the cars that we've seen here are cars that you would consider selling, right? Or are for yes. sale actively? Okay, you've got, now that, that seems like it's out of place, but that, is that Maserati as well? No, or? no, no, that one there is, is a 92 LeBaron GTC. Yep. Here, the thing is with that, it's only got 200 kilometers on it. It's never been registered. I still got the Nivis form. Why, why did I think that, they did some sort of LeBaron crossover I with... I have one, okay, over at the uh, other, my other sh shop. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a cross between uh, uh, Maserati and uh, Chrysler. Right, that's what I got that confused with. Yes. But how many miles are on this? 400 and something? 200. 200. Yeah. So it's basically a brand new car. Right. Like I said, it's never been registered. And so what's something like a 202 kilometer... So that's like, what, 150 miles or something on this since brand new? What's something like that worth? Okay, I, I think that I am underpriced, okay? And uh, was looking to get uh, uh, like $28,000 for the car. Canadian. Yeah. Okay. Which, you know... All things considered, how often do you find a brand new... I guess you got to really like them, but this was sort of a specialty, these LeBarons. This car, okay, because I... I have the original dealer invoice on yep. this car too as well. It was $22,000 in 1992. Wow. And if you think if they would have spent that same amount of money, I don't know how much this was in 92, but it probably wouldn't have been that much different at, at the time. Uh, you mean when this was new? Not when it was new, oh, but like... Uh, yeah, in 92, you could most probably bought it someplace in that 30000 $40,000 range, yes. Right, and so this has retained its value because it's basically like brand new. Yeah. But this is what hex stupled in value. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna make oh, up words now. And, and they fluctuate like crazy. They do, yeah. You know, at one point in time, this was down to about, uh, oh, I'm gonna say seventy five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. Yeah. You know, and then they really peaked up to darn near 200000 
you know. For a real clean one, yeah. And then the, you can find them kind of all over the place. Oh, yes. yep, yep, exactly. But it's like anything, condition plays a role and all that stuff. But yes. classic body lines, very similar in style to a 308 almost, you yes. know, the the alcove sort of on the side. But, but aside from the exotic red car up at the front here, you've got all sorts of cool American stuff. A Camaro SS, uh, Z28. Z28 with the cross rams. Oh, it's got the cross rams in it. Sixty-eight. Oh yeah, look at that. And this is a numbers matching car. It was authenticated because uh, at one point in time, when a guy was interested in buying it, uh, he wanted it authenticated. Sent the person down here. Uh, we took it over to the other shop so the guy could look up, put it, put it up on the hoist and everything else. And at that time, the guy says, "Yeah, that's a true Z28," and he says. You're not asking enough money for that. The real deal. So, yeah, but he didn't end up buying it, obviously, and, no, and here it uh, is. One of those guys that, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's absolutely in pristine condition. Did you do the restoration on this? No, no. Or it was in this kind of shape when you yeah, got it? I mean, but every single one of these cars is that, like, I don't care if I bought a $1,000 car or a $100,000 car. I have to do work on all of them. Right. You know what I mean? You have to do something. You know, this one here uh, ended up doing the carburetors on this one. Uh, just, you know, over time they dry up and our, our fuel isn't as good as it used to be. Yep. But uh, That's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got a, I mean, just every kind of cool muscle car that some guy would want a, a miniature of, let alone the real deal, you've got a full-size toy collection in here. <laughs> it's been a passion of mine for a long time. And believe me, is... Some people think I got a lot of money. I don't. I have a lot of stuff. I don't have much money. Well, I mean, money is just, but what fun is money? It's just That's paper. Right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. It's more fun to have oh. things you can enjoy. Well, yes, very much so because. Uh, and what, what year is this? Is 70? 72. 72, okay. Yeah, 72. And this is also a, uh, uh, it's not a numbers matching because the engine is now, it's got an LS6 in it. Okay. And originally it came with an LS5, which is, I think, uh, 390 horse. Uh, but it's an authentic SS car? It, oh, yes, yes. And here's the documentation from GM. Oh, there it is right there. Oh, it was sold new in Edmonton. Yeah. The local vehicle. That's always nice to have. Yeah. And then you've got another... 428 Mustang. It's four, it's, it's, yeah, it was originally a 428 Mach 1, but what it's got in it now is an all aluminum 427 side oiler built by Shelby Corporation. Oh, okay, so it's a little, it's a little hot. Yeah. Look at that. Now this one, I don't know, uh, cause I, I called them up to find out how can I tell which horsepower rating this one was. And where they put the serial number, if you want to call it, is between the block and the transmission so you have to take drop the you know take the bell housing off and shit like that to see it oh so it's back here it's somewhere back there, yes okay because i was searching all of the front and everything else and i couldn't find then i called them up but they came with either a 550 650 or a 750 horse and i'm not too sure which one it is all i know is when i i took it to the track uh and uh, basically did a quarter mile burnout and this was, uh, so Shelby Motorworks out of Las Vegas? Yes. Okay, wow. Not many people have a Shelby. And Carol, when you got it, was Carol Shelby still around? No. Oh, okay. No, no. Uh, this was uh, picked up in Palm Springs. In Palm Springs, okay. Yeah. What a car, though. I mean, these have really shot up in value the last few yeah. years, too. This is almost like, I know it's a, it's a Mach 1, but it has that Eleanor sort of 68 kind of look. You know, it, you, you could imagine Steve McQueen getting out of something like that. But uh, super neat. And, and a Buick GS? Yes. 400? This, this one, yeah. This one here. Uh, this, I started doing this car back in 1981 for a friend of mine. This, I didn't have a shop or anything at that time. I was working out of my back garage. And he came to me and he wanted me to uh, just redo the powertrain because I didn't have a body shop or anything at that time. And uh, anyways, took, then he wanted me to like do the frame up too for him. So we took the body off and everything else, sent the body to a body shop to get done. Uh, 
which we ended up redoing afterwards because things just weren't right. It wasn't the way you wanted it. But this car, uh, it's got air conditioning. It, it's, uh, and this was a local, was this a Canadian car as well? Yeah, it's a Canadian car, yeah. We added in a lot of the options on it. This car did not come with air conditioning, okay. but we had a donor car. So I cut the, the firewall out of that donor car, put it into this one for the air conditioning. And it's got the Twilight Sentinel system, you know, for automatic dimming of the lights. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the driver's seat is powered, the passenger seat reclines, it's got power windows, power locks, power trunk, uh, and it is a true four speed, 400 four speed car. And a true in induction hood too. Yes. A lot of times you see the, the induction hoods and they're non-functional, but this is functional. Yes, yes. Where it basically draws the air right through, for those watching at yeah. home that don't yeah. know. Yeah, it just, yeah, right into here. Yep, yeah. and in it goes. Well, tremendous, and this isn't in a 455 horsepower Firebird? Well, not 455 horsepower. Or 455. 455 cubic inch. Right, yeah. right, right. And the rarity about this one is uh, it has the M22 four speed, and there was only either 165 or 167 built with the uh, 455 HO and an M22 four speed. Uh, in the Muncie's, they had an M20, M21, and an M22. Pretty hot car. Yeah. And uh, when I was a kid, I had the AFX slot car set, and I had pretty much the same color scheme and same body as this, and it was my favorite one to use. I think it had working headlights even. And uh, so I have fond childhood memories yeah. of these. Everything is so nice and clean too. Like the, the engine bays, I mean, these are already for, they're resale already. <laughs> yes, but I tell you, even though now is uh, what I like to do on them, if I sell one, is I'll say, uh, you know what, I like to go through it just to make sure that, you know, the brakes are working properly because after even just sitting, you know, the seals either dry up, you know, uh, so I like to go that way. And uh, Sometimes if people say, no, I want to take it just the way it is. And I'll say, okay, fine. You can, you can do that. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want somebody to go through it though and make sure it looks and works properly. But it's funny. I, I found out I had a, a brother, which is a whole other story, but I met the guy for the first time. His name's Steve, lovely man. And I go in his backyard and, you know, I'm a car enthusiast. So you're, you're there to meet your new relative, but he had a 70 charger in Hemi orange in original unrestored condition sitting in his yard under a tarp. So it was like, Hey, nice to meet you. Oh my gosh. Is that a 70? It was a, sorry, a 70 Cuda. Um, and, 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 uh, with the big block and stuff in it and very similar body style to this. And you said a brother that you didn't know. About. I didn't know about. I just, I just met him last year. My dad didn't know he existed either. And, okay. so, and so we did the DNA thing. Yeah. And then it turned up I had a half brother. And anyway, he's into the same stuff I'm into. Uh, and he had this. That would be great. It would. Well, yeah. But then it's hard not uh, showing interest in the vehicle when you're trying to, you know. But we went around antique stores and went and found some stuff together. So it was a good time. I got to go back. He's in Denver. So I got to go back and see him again. But uh, really cool car. That's 383 with the four barrel. This one here, the rare thing about this one, it's got a fold down rear seat. Oh, so you get more. This, this is the only, the second Challenger I've seen with a fold down rear seat. Just to give you more trunk space? No, I, well, yeah, I guess, you know, if you want to. If you want to pass stuff yeah, through. Yeah, pass or through. it gives you like a little, it's kind of like a businessman's coupe almost. Oh, I see. It's got like a parcel shelf back there when it folds down. Uh, well, that parcel, that, that opens up. Oh, I see. So that, that opens up. Yeah. You got this carpeted area. It's almost like when you would see those old 30s traveling salesman cars and they'd have room back there for your samples and stuff. But yeah, it gives you a lot more storage. Yeah. Really, really neat. And so what, what is something like this going for? Like what, what's the Challenger going for these days? This one here, again, I, I got to uh, uh, kind of recalculate things. Right. Uh, $80,000. Right, but what a car, and it doesn't need anything. It's, no. it's good to go. Yeah. Uh, and air conditioned car too as well. Is this plum crazy? Yes. Is that the color? Okay. Yeah. They had such great names. 
go mango yes. plum crazy <laughs> wow and again spotless under the hood here car show ready but this isn't it you had you had showed me before you had some milder sort of pro i wouldn't say projects but you had other stuff too oh i got yeah I'll yeah in the back okay <laughs> if we we're have to watch our step back there right now because like that's what i'm coming here today to fix because uh basically the town will not that it's kind of a stupid thing the town won't let me put a wall up oh there's back. always some trick hang on before you run go ahead that way i gotta show oh, the, the, the world's coolest jukebox i i couldn't you want to hear it <laughs> I, it, you I mean, know, it, it, normally it, I'd say yes, but I no, wouldn't. Just, just, just to hear it, just, uh, this isn't the record. This is just. So it has plays 45s in the cab and you've got basically, it looks like a truck. Yes. It's a 51 Chevy. 51 Chev. Is it made from actual metal or? No, that's fiberglass. All fiberglass molded to, to look like this. Yeah. So. If you just have a listen, it sounds just like the old six cylinder starting up. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, and then it selects an album and starts to play it. Isn't that cool? And you get, yeah. Um, but when our, and our transporting it here from Calgary, uh, it jarred the system a little bit. So I, I want somebody to come here to fix it. I've got a name. I've got a guy who can come fix it. Excellent. Yeah, I'll give that to you before we go. Yeah, because I, you know, I've had guys. Oh, okay, send it to me, and I said no because I send it to you. You fix it. I bring it back, and it don't work again. Yeah, they, they do get uh, fussy. They, they, yeah, yeah, they're they're kind of you know a little bit finicky. But this one here, to my knowledge, what I was told, in this style, this with the Chevy uh, 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 truck. Yeah. Uh, there's only three of them. Well, it would have been hugely expensive to manufacture. There is uh, one in, uh, there's supposed to be one in a museum in uh, Las Vegas. And apparently, and this is what I'm told, Kevin Costner has a bar someplace in Montana and there's supposedly one in there. And then you got yours here. And this one here. And, yeah, this and there's one, the coin mechanism right there yeah, too. This one came actually out of the museum at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stuff like this, they don't make a whole lot of. Right, Because yeah. you got to be a... I mean, a jukebox was expensive enough, let alone getting one that looked like a vehicle. But that's so cool. I, I just... I'm Thanks for stopping to show it, because it's too cool to pass up. This, this, are these customer cars, or are no, these no, yours? These, 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 are, these are ours. Uh, 55 Chevy? 55, yeah. Yeah, two-door post. Yeah. Look at, the, look at the tires on that thing. Well, that, that thing was uh, built from the quarter mile. Well, I see that. Yeah, it's a yeah, race car. It's got a, it's got a yeah, it's got a five-speed in it, which the very sloppy shifter. Right. And this is another one because my uh, my quarter miler, I blew the engine in it, and I really never drove this thing hard at all. I bought it for a guy, and he backed out on the deal. It's all tubbed out and everything. Yeah, is this so, street legal too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I took it down to the track. My first run, I missed third gear, and I did a fourteen-eight. Oh, geez. The second run, I missed second and third, but I did a 14 too. <laughs> the third run, I thought I'm going to slow myself. I'm not going to try to speed shift. So anyways, third run, did a 12.8. Wow. In this, in that car. In that car. And then for the qualifying run, I thought, okay, I'm going to put, you know, dial in my best time. So I put down 12.8. I broke out. I did a 12.2. 12.2. Yes, and this, this is an 11 second car once I fix up that shifter so I can shift a little bit better with it. And what's happening? What is this, a Super B or? This here? Yeah, Road or Runner. Roadrunner. Yes, what's happening with this Roadrunner? I'll try to make a long story short. The guy came to us first of all with this Roadrunner and he said, hey, I want just a driver. But the floor was rusted out of it. Yeah. The, the brakes were shot, the suspension was shot. And I told him, I said, if you plan on redoing the whole car, you're wasting money by doing it piecework like this. Like, get, no, 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 that's what I've done. So yeah, we gutted the thing, we put the floors in, and uh, we did the brakes and, you know, ball joints, tie rod ends, everything else. And at that time, we were also doing a rotisserie on a 74 Challenger. And uh, he came into the shop and he looked at the Challenger and he said, I want you to do that to my car. Rotisserie? Yeah. So okay. 
the only thing that, uh, let's see, we replaced the quarter panels, the doors, the front fenders, um, the roof is original, or well, the back uh, tail light panel, that's, we had to replace that too as well. The trunk uh, floor, the interior floor, like I said, we did. And then he says, I wanted to handle a little bit better and, and brake better. Can you do disc brakes and a rack and pinion steering? And I said, you just did this, all this other work on it. Yeah. He said, yeah. He says, but that's what I want. So fine. We were going through this thing. We had $60,000 in our, our bill. Right. Including the car. That was our bill on the car. And it wasn't finished yet. And uh, he said, he, hey, I kind of ran out of money. In, you know, can you just, you know, hang on to the car? So for two years, it sat in the lean to over at the shop. They're covered up. You know, we had to yeah. some of stuff. I got a phone call one day, and this guy says, Do you have this guy's car there, this roadrunner? And I said, Yeah, we do. He says, Oh, uh, I'm interested in buying it from him. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, uh, Like, uh, what would you like to know? And he asked, okay, it's all done, ready to go. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. There's about $10,000 worth of work yet to do on it. Yeah. And uh, he said, oh. And I said, oh, well, what are you buying it for? He says, 24000 Oh. Yeah. And I said, he's selling it for twenty four grand." So I called him up right away and I just said, hey, Ward, or like, I mean, you're selling your car? And he says, yeah. I said, for twenty four grand? He says, yeah. I said, he said, I need the money. And I said, well, Ward, I'll give you 24 grand for the car. Right. But and he said, well, no, I already kind of made the deal with the guy. And and, uh, and I said, okay, fine. About two hours later, he phones me back. And he says, Myron, you want the car? It's yours. The guy came back and offered me $18,000 for the car. Wow. And so you ended up with it. Yeah. But then, that's how I ended up with it. But what happened to your bill? Did you ever get paid? Oh, we got uh, the $60,000. Uh, yeah, I had the rest of the parts there. Yeah, that's what I said, the $10,000 because it was the interior. Gotcha, the okay. Yeah. And do you have all the bits to finish it? Yes, but you know how it is. Well, I got many <laughs> customer stuff to, to try to finish off, and uh, so it kind of gets put on the sidelines. Now, I'm no expert here, but you might need a tire. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, I, can, I, I can see into the rim. Yeah, but the, it's going to get the... Uh, Actually, the uh, uh, kind of what it came with, you know, the basically the standard rims with the dog dish hubcaps. Right. Yeah, that'll look good on it. Yeah. And then these Kragers will look good on something else. They don't look bad on it, but they're pretty rotted they're pretty, out. Yeah, they're pretty. They're yeah. beat. They can be yeah. cleaned up, you know, for something. That, yeah. But you always have the cool stuff. You, you make visiting out here a joy every time I have to come through. On here just oh sure 56 57. oh 57 but they didn't really change the looks of these no, too much no, not a whole much and what this is here for is because we're having a hell of a time with the temperature gauge and uh tried all kinds of resources to figure out how to have why the damn thing don't work got a new sending unit got a new gauge and it still wasn't working what it would do as soon as it started to warm up it would just usually pin the gauge pin it out right yeah. so anyways there's a, a fellow who wants to come and work with us he's a retired guy this is his error if you want to call it he doesn't mm -hmm. want to work full-time he just wants to come you know once in a while once in a while so yeah he was here uh i don't know it was a few oh, about a month ago when it was cold and uh, anyways we found out uh by putting a resistor in there, is that got it to work. Oh, so good to go. Yeah, and here's the, the funny thing, is I got a customer's 57 outside, but the same damn problem. So, so now, now you know what now, to do. Yeah, now, now we know what to do, yeah. It's funny, I got a, uh, in my hall of die cast, I picked up, there was a Prowler, and I said, you know, it's a pretty wild factory car that they made, you know? Yes. Plymouth putting out basically concept vehicles at that time in the late 90s, uh, you know, it's so many unusual vehicles. But a factory built hot rod, that was such a wild idea. And you have one. And I, I, I do, I think they're an interesting looking vehicle. I was never a fan of these bumpers they had to yeah. stick on there. No, but that was to do with the, uh, how can you say, the safety standards. Yeah, had to have. You had to have a bumper that would stand, what is it, five kilometers or something or other. I can't remember anyways, but that's. Uh, it would look so much better with those things off. Yes. But. But uh, it's factory as it is right now.
But I guess your headlights are, oh no, your headlights are yeah, there. So there. just the signals are, something yeah. you could figure I've something seen, out. I've seen guys that took them off and changed it around. But that's the thing, you go and change it and then somebody might want it back the way it was. There's almost no point. That's it. Well, you know what? Is is because they don't make them anymore and anything else like that. So they are going to be worth more in their stock form than they are modern. Yeah, because it is a factory vehicle. Just yeah. absolutely wild looking thing. To think you could have gone into the showroom when they were selling Dodge Caravan and Town and Country Chryslers and also picked up a Prowler. Yes. Oh, I see. You've got uh, a lake forming back here. Yes. You see what it is just like a car lover's dream in here. And you've got a little bit of everything, but yes. I know you have a Dodge Stealth. Yes, I now, got a, actually I've got three, four of them. Now that was a relationship between Dodge and, was it Mitsubishi. Matt? Mitsubishi, yeah. Yes. So there's a Mitsubishi out there that looks almost the same, isn't there? Yes. In, that yes. they would have uh, sold overseas? Uh, three, what do they call it, a 3000? Yeah, because essentially it's a Japanese car with Dodge badging. Right. Um, kind of a cool thing, really. I mean, you know, they... That car, the bang for your dollar, is, is kind of uh, one of the greatest deals. That car is the fastest I've driven on land. Not on, this particular one. But that model. That have, yes. And driving it, not pointing it. At actually driving at 177 miles an hour not kilometers 177 miles an hour whoa you're flying yes and i'm driving uh this is five o'clock in the morning i'm i pull into the middle of a of a like a four lane yeah okay and i do this and the car goes so tight yes fast staying on the ground twin turbo uh all-wheel steer, all-wheel drive. Oh, it's all-wheel steer as well. Like yeah. the Honda Prelude had all-wheel steering yes, at the same yeah. time. And, you know, like when these came out, I had a dealership back when they came out. And uh, me and the, the, uh, the rep got along quite well. And when these things were coming and he knew I was a car guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was before all the computer shit and everything else. We were ordering computers but you have to fill out the, the paperwork and uh, submit it that way. So anyways, he gave me the codes and everything else to put down for ordering. And he said, but you don't dare put that in until I call you and tell you. So uh, anyways, I was the first dealer in Canada to order a Stealth. To order a Stealth, do you still have it or? I sold that one, but I got a twin. You got a twin to it, okay. Yeah. The first, uh, uh, Crosstown Motors, uh, Pioneer, uh, Crosstown Motors, I think it was Pioneer or Crosstown, they got one before me, and uh, anyways, I raised a little hell about it because I had, I ordered three. You, you ordered, oh right, so you're waiting on yours. Well, this one looks like it's in pretty good shape under the dust. It, it, it is, yes. Well, that's the whole thing. That's why I want to close this thing off too as well. Limit the dust and the, the airflow. Yes, and yes, and all these, you know, like the shit that goes. Oh, I can see. Yeah, they start to get dusty, duster, dusty, du dusty demon. <laughs> uh, but what I did is I also now I purchased the property next door. Oh, okay. So now I can you can move some stuff around. I can close off that that side for sure. A nice little Nova two door. Yes, that is uh, okay. It's a factory documented too as well. Three twenty seven. Three twenty seven. SS. Four speed. No, it's not an SS, it's a 210. It's a 210. It's rare, rarer than the SS. When I got that car, I thought it was because it had the SS badges on it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and it's got a 12 volt posi and a factory tack and a bench seat with four speed. Wow. Yeah, what an unusual combination. I'm gonna, I'm gonna saunter my way down here. 66 T-Bird. Yeah. And what is this, like a 56 Chrysler? Yep. I always like the DeSotos of this era. They're a really neat looking vehicle. I mean, this is as well. There's your Cadillac Alante, a couple Cadillacs side by side. What uh, caught my attention last time I was here is actually the Studebaker over there, which we'll get to. Yeah. But you've got a Marilyn Monroe style pink T-Bird back here too. Yeah. 57 T-Bird. 
These were so hot in the late 80s and early 90s, yes, weren't yes. they? And they, they fluctuated greatly in price. Well, that's the thing. Like, these were so expensive in the 80s and 90s, and then they came right, right back down. down. Yeah. But uh, this, is, this is a true, that's the original color of the car, pink. That is a factory pink yeah. car. Wow, that's super neat. I'm going to, let's see. Oh, and then another Mustang sitting here. That Mustang, yeah, this is a customer's. Oh, okay. Uh, waiting to get restored. Um, Doesn't look too bad. Some rust probably underneath that vinyl top. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, is that it's the underneath. Um, oh, right. That, that we got to... An old Mercedes. Oh yeah, and that wild Volkswagen over there. Let's see if I can yeah. wiggle my way through. It's it, the ground is just pure ice underneath my yes, feet here. So but that's okay. I'm gonna. I'm shuffling. I'm not even walking. I'm gliding on the ground right now. It's like a weird skiing motion, but <laughs> it's doing the trick. Is that an Audi? Yes. This mind your step too. It's super icy. Of all the weird things to have next to each other, you've got this Volkswagen that's been done up to look like what a 40 Ford, 40 Ford yep. at great expense. I can only imagine how expensive it was for somebody to do this conversion at that time with the chop top and the split window. And did you ever find out if this was a factory convertible Volkswagen at one point or it's hard to tell, I guess. Um, Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Is it still uh, licensed or was it licensed as a Volkswagen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they start with a basically a maybe. Volkswagen. And, and the only thing that looks like it's still Volkswagen is really maybe the fenders. Uh, the front yeah, fender. The nose piece is that, that's. Uh, nose piece is different. different. Uh, the, the back end is, is different. I see. It's got a Continental kit on it. Just what a wild ride. You told me the story of this last time that you saw it from a distance and thought yes, it was a 40 I thought, Ford. Yeah, I thought it was a 40 Ford. And then you get up close and you're like, it didn't get any bigger when I walked up next to it. No, yeah. Corvette. Yeah. You got all the toys here. And that's, uh, this car here, this Corvette, is because uh, I was looking for a 65 with the 396. Right. Because that's the only year they, they put the 396 in them. And, uh, but uh, like body wise, very nice because I checked it underneath and everything else, but there was things that contradicted each other. Like for instance, the, the uh, rad support was out of a fuel injected car. Oh, okay. So at some time or other. Uh, Somebody had a fuel injected well, engine in it? No, I don't know if they had a fuel injected into it, but most probably uh, they could have, uh, because this car was raced. Right. And uh, that's not the original motor. Uh, and uh, actually a friend of mine, uh, he called me up and he said that uh, he's seen a video of this car at Edmonton Speedway. Oh, remember? What, from like back in the 70s in the, or something? In the, yeah, 80s. 80s, 70s, okay, 80s. yeah. And uh, it had a blower on it at the time. Oh, yeah. It was same color sequence with, you know, the white in the front. And... Uh, the three taillights in the back because the one taillight was added. Okay, yeah. So you could identify that was the same car. Yes, yes. And I wondered why, when I bought it, why was there holes drilled in the back bumper? And I'm thinking, like, what the hell would the guy have back there? Yeah. Wheelie bars. Wheelie bars, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and it, I guess because you have sort of a racing background yourself, you're kind of attracted to these sort of cars. Like, not many people would buy that green one over there. But you know what? That started off as a, as a 1963 Plymouth Belvedere four-door sedan. Right. Somebody so, did a hell of a lot of work on it. It needs it needs a, a total going over though. Oh my gosh, it's the, wild. But the you know the uh, yeah the, the body filler is cracking up on it and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's it's chopped. It's it's it's, no it's it, it's yeah shortened. Shortened, yes. But you know you th when you look at a car like this, and you think, okay, well somebody had to go to all that effort to make something that's maybe not everybody's cup of tea, uh, but then somebody had to make custom glass for it. Well, that's Plexi. And I, oh, I'm, it's Plexi, if, okay. If I, if I end up doing it, yeah. you know, I, I got lots of stuff to do, but uh, if I end up redoing this car, is I'm gonna change it all to glass. 
Yeah, and that's and, a, and that's a real it. skill yeah. to get glass cut for yeah. something like that. And this this here this this is another. Oh yeah. Four forty with two fours. So hot engine. I mean, even if you would have bought it just for the engine, you would have been laughing pretty yeah. much. Basically, when I bought it, that's about what I paid for. Was the engine price? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, not hey, not everybody's gonna be driving down the road and something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm starting to pick it up. Like you like fast and you like weird, and some and sporty and classy oh, and. I, I, I like different stuff. Like you seen that uh, international truck on the front there. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, because. Yeah, it's a supercharged with a four-speed. Supercharged Studebaker, four-speed transmission. Yeah. And uh, if the, I guess, the desirable, that is most probably the more, most desirable of them. Uh, is the door open? I don't know. It might not. Oh, yeah. oh it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these were, um, they made the Avanti 2, which was kind of a replica of this car, but this is the authentic Studebaker produced yes. Avanti. Yes. Which there's a big difference in value between this and, yes, a, exactly. and a Studebaker too. But this is a fiberglass body. Yes. So you're not going to see rust. But I guess they do have a tendency to rust in certain areas that I guess you got to watch out for. But this looks like a fairly solid and fairly original car, really. Yeah. I like that it's very European feeling. Like they, they basically built almost like an uh, Italian-American car. It's so wild and crazy. This is the sort of thing I like. I like weird, unusual, and cool stuff that ticks a lot of boxes. <laughs> and it might be for sale, so here you go. Well, that was a collection and a half. You never know what's lurking inside of a cool building <laughs> until you get the invite to go walk around. Uh, I'd actually been out there once before. Luckily for me, he let me film this time because <laughs> it's one of the nicer car collections in my area. But uh, thank you very much for, to Myron for showing me his vehicles. And uh, if anybody's interested in any of the cars they saw, you can uh, uh, send me an email and I can forward that over to Myron and he can get in touch with you on it because there are some spectacular cars in very nice condition. But guys, uh, that's it for me today. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now.